Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Pantel, CEO of LSI, and today I have Dave Mildrew and Peter Schneller, both managing directors of BioQuest, which is a diversified search company. Welcome, guys. It's great to have you today. Glad to be here, Scott. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. We're re really happy to be here. Well, we're, we're, we're fortunate to have you guys as not only a founding sponsor of the Emerging MedTech Summit, but big news that we're about to announce, and I guess we can do it here, and that is that you guys have increased your commitment to med tech, health tech, and the ecosystem, and you guys have now upped the ante, and you've joined us as a title sponsor, and I wanted to publicly thank you guys for your commitment on that. Thank you. So Dave, <laughs> Dave uh, I'd like to start with you. You've been around for, for I think nearly 20 years in the space. Can you get our audience current with BioQuest? Are you guys, uh, how are things going? We just had a conversation about one of your clients. It sounds like things are quite busy. Get us current with what's going on today. Sure, well, you know, from the founding of BioQuest, and I, I know you know our founding uh, managing director, uh, Roger Anderson, very well. Uh, Roger started the uh, BioQuest company some 30 plus years ago in San Francisco. And since then we've grown uh, beyond San Francisco to Orange County and also Boston today. Uh, and then Peter can tell you a little bit more about our affiliation association with uh, Diversified Search. But we're very busy at BioQuest these days and we're seeing a lot of activity in the, uh, not only the med device space, med tech space, but also in pharma, biotech, and other areas of um, medical, including everything that's going on in digital health. So we're really excited to be part of it. And uh, we remain you know, very active in our uh, client, uh, um, client contacts with companies in the traditional med tech space, but we've expanded beyond that as well. How did BioQuest find you or how did you find BioQuest? I know you have a really interesting background that's exposed you to small companies and large companies. And I know that when you're often looking for the ideal candidate, it includes some combination of, of multiple, uh, multiple experiences. So how did they find you and how does your background help you when you're, when you're targeting a, a client's uh, placement? Yeah, so I started my career many years ago, uh, Scott, uh, working for Pfizer, so on the pharma side. So I was with Pfizer. That's actually how I got to California on a promotion and a move out here. And then uh, I was recruited to my first startup, which became what is known today as Caremark. So Caremark got started here in Orange County in Newport Beach many years ago as the first true home infusion therapy company. And it was a startup. And it had a very successful deal and eventual sale to Baxter. So um, I had that experience. And then the way BioQuest found me and I found BioQuest was uh, BioQuest. We were a client of BioQuest. And that's where I first met Roger Anderson um, in another startup. And he helped us find a number of key people in a growing company uh, that, that also was successful. So I got to know both sides of the equation of what the large companies are looking for, but also what's needed in these smaller companies, these emerging companies that don't have all the resources and you gotta get a lot done. So uh, it, it's, it was a fun ride to see both. And that's how my connection to uh, BioQuest originally uh, evolved. Peter, any, any part of your background that, that helps you identify candidates? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I, I spent over 25 years on the commercial side. I, I spent 11 years at Abbott Laboratories, went to some smaller pharma companies. Um, I co-founded a startup called Veris Pharmaceuticals. We raised 150 million for that company, uh, developed um, a drug device combination along with an asthma program. We sold that business to AstraZeneca. Um, I went on to a couple of other um, early stage pharma companies. Uh, then I slid over to diagnostics. Um, I was chief commercial officer for a couple of diagnostic companies. The last company I was with um, was a pharma company that was in, in the midst of it doing a turnaround. Um, over a two year period, we turned that company around and set it up for an M&A. And at that point I was ready to do something a little bit different. I had always been intrigued about executive search. I'd been approached by firms throughout my career. 
Um, and I took time off and got smarter about the industry um, and looked at some of the bigger players and was introduced to BioQuest and, and actually Dave Mildrew here. Uh, and um, it felt like the right thing to do. And that was uh, a number of years ago. And uh, I've been off to the races ever since. So um, it's been a great fit for me. Um, and I think, you know, what I try to bring to the table when I talk to CEOs or senior leadership is I've been on their side of the table. I've hired individuals that they're looking to hire. So I kind of know what good looks like. Um, and I try to use that experience to bring value to the companies we work with. Powerful backgrounds and experiences that make you guys to, to deliver the reputation that you guys uh, have out there in industry. So thank you for that. And I, and I know, Dave, that you, know, you guys have been around for so long. Uh, the networks are deep. And we, you've been through a few. We've been through quite a bit over the years. What's your sense for the market? Do you see things picking up? Um, what's your sense for the next one to two years, just in general, from a, from a market perspective? Yeah, I, I think a year ago when COVID first hit, there was a little bit of a pause, just a very brief one. But we've been very busy for the last nine to 10 months where we're seeing a lot of activity in both investment as well as new companies being started. So I think uh, we're, we're very happy with the pace and the activity that's going on in the world today compared to where we thought we might be a year ago when everyone was uncertain as to what was going to happen with the pandemic. And I, I know, Peter, that uh, you bring a different, um, a different emphasis, an additional emphasis to the BioQuest team with your background. Can you get the audience current on, on where you came from and kind of what your focus is today with, with what you're doing? Sure, and I can relate it back to BioQuest Diversified Search. So prior to coming over to Executive Search a few years ago, um, I spent 25 years um, on the commercial operating side. So I spent time with big companies like Abbott Laboratories on the pharma side. Um, I co-founded a couple startups, uh, then moved over to diagnostics and medical devices prior to uh, doing what I'm doing now. Um, as it relates to sort of how that fits into BioQuest Diversified, you know, as Dave mentioned, um, BioQuest has been around for uh, over 30 years, uh, laser focused in that life sciences space, um, biotech, pharma, medical device, diagnostics. Uh, and over, a little over four years ago, uh, they were acquired by a much larger firm called Diversified Search, uh, that is private equity backed. Uh, diversified uh, is a of different verticals, uh, not-for-profit academia, healthcare, um, and they acquired uh, BioQuest to really augment and bolster uh, their life sciences practice. So, you know, I, I think the best way to frame what we're doing at, at BioQuest slash diversified search is it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, BioQuest offers this high-touch, uh, high-service boutique executive search firm service um, but with the exceptionally deep resources that are found in a, in a much larger firm. In fact, Forbes ranked Diversified Search uh, the number fifth executive search firm in the U.S. for 2020. Uh, so it's, it's a really great situation for us to be in. That's great. And uh, I, um, I'm just curious something that as, you're, as you're talking there about your background, and I know you guys are so connected to the different, different areas of our industry but do you have, and you can both weigh in on this, are there any segments that are particularly hot right now or that you guys are seeing a lot of activity in, or is it just more of an across the board ramp up of what's happening in industry? We can start with either one of you. What's hot, what's hot right now? Yeah, well, I think part of that is a geographical uh, bias uh, with the fact that there are so many ophthalmology companies here in Orange County, Scott, We've, we've done quite a bit of work in ophthalmology of late, as well as over the recent past, just because there's so much activity here, whether it's in devices or pharma or some combination of both. Uh, that's a, that's a ripe, very ripe area uh, for our firm. Uh, but also the other, the other therapeutic areas, we're seeing a lot of activity in other areas as well. And then you have the advent of uh, everything that's going on with artificial intelligence, and tech-enabled devices uh, that are really, new things are popping up all the time. And Peter and I have worked on a couple of projects where uh, we, didn't, we didn't see it coming, uh, it came out of the blue, 
but they were really great opportunities just because there is a lot of activity these days. Yeah, I mean, you know, just to tag on what Dave said, I mean, I think the, the industry is smoking hot right now. You know, I think what happened when COVID hit, I think a lot of money was put on the sidelines for a kind of wait and see. Uh, and now um, it's being put to work. Um, you know, our, our, our overall practice business is probably up three or four times what we saw this time last year. Uh, so it's, and I think it's across all sectors. It's, it's across biotech, med device, pharma, diagnostics. I mean, we're involved in, in all of those sectors and um, there's enormous growth. So I recently had a conversation with Scott Hennekins. He's going to be our keynote speaker, very well known in the industry. And one of uh, the exciting stories that he'll share is the volcano story. And in speaking with him, he explained to me that the tech that they originally were designing ended up becoming something quite different in terms of the actual delivery. And he, he attributed a lot of their success towards having the right people, the right team that was able to identify opportunities and be nimble. So we have all these companies that are here raising money. We've got investors there that are looking for opportunities. How does the investor view the team? How does the CEO need to understand the importance of their human assets. And obviously that's where you guys come in. Talk to me a little bit about that relationship. Sure, uh, you know, for myself, prior to coming to research, I, I was on the commercial operating side. I had the good fortune to do a couple startups where we raised venture funding. And without exception, with every VC that I spoke to, um, they would consistently say that, you know, they're certainly betting on the technology to a, a degree, but ultimately they're betting on the team who, who is that company? Uh, because at the end of the day, even if the technology is halfway successful, if you've got a great team, um, they're going to figure it out and make it even more successful. Uh, and that obviously ties back to what, what Dave and I do. And that's finding you know great leadership for these companies. That's terrific. Dave, would you add anything there? Yeah, but what I would add is uh, there's an example that I'm thinking of. Uh, Peter and I... Um, partnered to do a CEO search this past year for a company that had great technology. They had a great R&D team in place. Um, we don't need to name the company. They, they already had a reputation for being very good at what they do technically, but they needed a CEO leader. And they realized the investors, the VCs who were involved as board members and investors realized that they needed a strong CEO to not only um, grow the company, but to really take this uh, stellar group of R&D leaders and put together the right team to surround them and then really make this company successful. And I think they're well on the way to do that. So I think it's, um, and you use the example of uh, Scott and Volcano. I, I recall very specifically what they were going after in their uh, initial R&D um, work at Volcano Therapeutics and basically they had to pivot and because they had the right team they saw what they needed to do and that's the key is that team was the was what made it successful Scott and the key leaders that he hired there to really make it successful despite the fact that they ended up pursuing something different than they originally set out to do. That's terrific. So we need them both. We need the capital. We need the people. We, we, we need the right people. We need the right team. And uh, that's why I, I, I love, you know, this meeting that we do. Uh, it brings everybody together in one place. And hopefully at the end of the day, we can more quickly commercialize the technology that changes a life. And uh, it's great to just be a small part of that. And I, again, want to thank you guys for, for helping us pull this thing off. We, we couldn't do it without you guys. Before we get to uh, the kind of final question that I've, I've really loved asking folks during the course of these, these interviews, is there anything, and we'll start with you, Peter, and Dave, if you want to add anything to it, is there anything that, that our audience should know that may not know about what you guys are up to these days? Um, is there anything new that uh, you'd like to, to spread the word on re with regard to what you guys are working on? No, I... I I don't think it's anything new. I think it's what we've done for years and that's provide really high quality search work. Um, and you know, the exceptionally high touch is really important to point out. Um, when, when we do a search, it's the managing directors like Dave and myself that are the ones that execute that search. Um, we don't pass it off to junior people in the organization. So we own that search 
And I think that has a profound impact on the level of talent that we bring into the organizations we work with. You know, the other, the other thing that I would like to just comment on, Scott, is uh, I think many companies today uh, realize they are indeed in, in a, uh, a war for talent. And you hear that phrase thrown around a lot, that companies uh, are struggling to keep up with the demand of filling all the key positions that they need to fill. I believe today uh, there's even greater demand than there has been in the past for that kind of talent to help build these companies. And if you look at the typical company that's presenting at your event, uh, at this combined event, um, I, I think really what you're seeing is even greater demand these days to find the right level of talent to help build and grow these organizations. And finding that leadership, I mean, you think about it, every time you hear an investor talk about what it takes to get, you know, be successful in this world, it takes a talented team. And finding all the right people to do that is not an easy job. And that's why we're here. Oftentimes, these uh, smaller companies will initially rely on their own network of advisors and investors to help them find talent. But ultimately, they run out of the connections that they need to really build a strong and robust team. And that's, I think, where we come in. We're not going to be there for every search that every company needs because they're going to they're going to fill a lot of those positions on their own, but they're going to come across positions where they just don't have the reach or the scope to find the talent they need. And, and that's where we come in. That's great. That, that's really terrific. And I know that um, one of the things I like to do is tout my attendee list for the event. And uh, it's tough to put somebody on my attendee list that one of one or both of you guys don't already know. So you guys are clearly connected and, uh, have placed some executives at some very, very uh, successful companies. And hopefully you find a couple more that you can help at the event. And I know that there'll be many companies that will be interested in, in catching up with you guys and sharing what they're currently looking for. And I wanna again, thank you for just your commitment to the, to the whole ecosystem. Putting on these events is not possible without having a partner like BioQuest. So I, I, I thank you guys sincerely for helping us pull this thing off. It's gonna be, I think a really special event. I look forward to seeing you guys. Um, one of the questions I'd love to ask him, and uh, why don't we start, we'll start with Peter, give Dave some time to think about his answer. Uh, we're <laughs> just calling it kind of the, the COVID silver lining. This year, year and a half has been quite challenging, but I think some really, you know, some neat things and some learnings have come out of it. So Peter, you're first up, professional, personal, maybe a little bit of both. What's the, what's the COVID silver lining for you these days? You know, I, I, I mentioned it to you the other, the other day when we had lunch. I mean, one silver lining is I, I think it's forced us to be even more efficient in how we get work done. Um, you know, I, I, uh, we're probably working longer hours than we did before, but it's much more efficient. There's no commute to the office. You're not burning you know, time in the car. I think we've also gotten um, significantly more efficient using technology like this. Um, you know, I recall Prior COVID, getting on a Zoom call was kind of like going to Vegas. Sometimes it would work, <laughs> uh, sometimes it wouldn't work. But now, you know, it's it's a matter of course. Um, on the personal side, you know, I'll just say that uh, it's been a blessing uh, for my wife and I. Both my boys are home, uh, one from college, one from high school. Um, it's kind of unfortunate, but it's also, you know, really afforded us an opportunity to spend time together as a family that under normal circumstances that never would have happened. Um, so, you know, I think we're certainly blessed by, by having had that experience. That's great. All right, Dave, you're up. Yeah, so I, I would say the same thing about the efficiencies that it's really made us a better at what we do because we, we have more time to focus on what's really important. I think the downside, of course, is the fact that we're not able to be out meeting people like we routinely do and would love to do on a regular basis face to face. But I think that's beginning to change, especially here in Southern California, where we're seeing uh, things opening more uh, and more people feeling confident that now that they've gotten both of their vaccines or one, the, the J and J vaccine, whichever they have, that they're feeling more confident. And uh, I think we're, we're all beginning to feel a little bit better that we'll be able to return to some of the things that uh, really we build the, build the company on, and that is some face-to-face -face meetings. Well, that's great. And speaking of face-to-face -face meetings, I was 
fortunate to get some time with you guys yesterday, a brief lunch. Look forward to spending three days with you here real soon. Again, I want to thank both of you and just the BioQuest uh, Diversified Search family for, for their support for the event and for the ecosystem. Again, we can't, we can't do this without you guys. And uh, just really looking forward to seeing you in a few short weeks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thanks very much. We're fortunate to work with you as well. Last year's meeting was great, and I have every expectation, expectation that this meeting will far eclipse that. So We're looking forward to it. Can't wait to see you guys. Thank you, Dave, Peter. Have a great day. Thanks a lot, Scott. Appreciate it.